Susan, Susan, Susan. I say this with all due respect, fully aware of the fact that my neck is well and truly beneath your knee, but you are a midwit, and you need to read the words you yourself write. You are the CEO of one of the most successful companies in human history. You cannot possibly be a stupid woman, and yet... You write this article for the Wall Street Journal of all publications. The publication that caused one of the first and greatest adpocalypse by lying about one of your largest stars, PewDiePie. And this entire bloody article, actually, let me not even preface this, right? Let me not start by poisoning the well. Allow me to allow Susan to poison her own reservoir, shall I? This is the first paragraph in an article arguing for private companies' ability to censor people, dependent upon their own arbitrary definition of harm. When I was growing up, every time I wrote a letter to my grandfather, I worried it might be censored. My father had fled communist Poland for the US, but my grandfather was unable to escape and still lived behind the Iron Curtain. I learned very young that it can be dangerous when governments reach too far. Again, this is the opening paragraph in an article arguing that an unaccountable entity should be allowed to arbitrarily define harm and then censor content based upon that definition. Ay. It is difficult to fully grasp how you could keep these two ideas in your head at the same time. Government censorship, arbitrary government censorship is bad, but arbitrary company censorship is good and should be encouraged. Right, let me lay this out here. The government of Poland, the communist government of Poland, were censoring your letters. A censor, a person whose job it was to look through content and decide whether or not it is harmful, much like your own content moderators, Susan, he did that. That was a job that existed in communist Poland because of the potential harm that you, a little girl, could inflict by writing a letter to your grandfather. How Bloody absurd does that sound? I imagine very absurd. But the reason why it was a thing was because the communist government had built their own structure, their own set of beliefs, their own set of fundamental truths, many of which were on somewhat shaky ground as far as actual truth were concerned. And so you writing a letter from America, which might contain news from America, that is a direct threat to the communist regime in Poland. Because one of the key things about these various communist regimes back in the day was that they were constantly pumping out propaganda, stating, oh no no, the West is a decadent, collapsing gathering of nations, and it's absolutely horrible over there. They are crushed beneath the boots of capitalism. They live in tiny houses and work 24 hours a day, etc, etc. When you then write a letter and describe actual life in America, that's not good for the communist regime. That might turn your grandfather into a counter-revolutionary, even more so if members of his family have already fled to the West. That is not a good thing in communist nations. And all of this is, of course, absolutely ridiculous. And yet... Policymakers around the world are introducing regulatory proposals. Some argue that too much content is left up on the platforms, whilst others say too much is taken down. At YouTube, we're working to protect our community while enabling new and diverse voices to break through. That too, by the way, is a communist idea. Why are you working to introduce communist ideas of equity and diversity onto your platform if you know what it was like to live in a communist country? At the very least, you have family that live there. That's... Never mind, and bear you in mind as well, YouTube absolutely does encourage diversity. They give money to people based upon their sexuality and their skin colour. 
is one hell of an idea in and of itself. Three principles should guide discussion about the regulations of online speech. Again, regulations of online speech. And bearing in mind too, regulation, as I've said again and again, is necessary now. And it is only necessary because of companies like YouTube. Entities that have decided for themselves what is and is not allowed. Because previously, actual government legislation on speech were very lenient. They tended to be quite Mayish, and there was really no way to truly enforce it either. It is only now with social media that we are starting to see an actual real crackdown on this and certain governments even pushing for uh, social media platforms to give your information to the police so they can hunt you down more effectively. First, the open internet has transformed society in incredible ways. Blah blah blah, YouTube makes information available to anyone with an internet connection. So long as you are allowed to have an account, of course. People around the world come to YouTube to find information. Well, I don't know about that, but... To learn and to build community. But creating a space that's open to everyone means that bad actors will sometimes cross the lines. Open to everyone. That's the thing, isn't it? It is not open to everyone. It is very much so closed off to certain people and certain groups. And some of that too is entirely reasonable because there are some levels of regulation, but they are imposed by the government. For example, terrorist content. Something that YouTube was very slow to start taking down, incidentally, is not allowed for good reasons. YouTube has always had community guidelines that set the rules of the road. That is true, but you have never tried to legislate via community guidelines like you are trying to do now. This is why YouTube was slapped with a fine from a German court for arbitrarily deciding to remove an anti-lockdown protest video. We remove content that could cause real harm, such as violent extremism, copyright infringement and dangerous pranks. Now, violent extremism, good. Copyright infringement, your definition of that is quite loose and fluid. And dangerous pranks. <laughs> I don't know about that. Sure, you do delete some, but I've seen your prank videos. Some of our decisions are controversial, hell yes. But we apply our policies equally regardless of who posts the content or the political viewpoint expressed. That is absolute goddamn nonsense and you know it. Hell, I am friends with a ton of people that have been actively censored again and again and again on YouTube for virtually no reason whatsoever. I've even had some of my own videos taken down, the most striking of which was one where I was talking about an article accusing the then President Trump of inciting the Capitol riots. And I said, okay, no, I don't think this happened. And I literally just played a clip of Trump where he was urging everyone to not do anything violent. That video was taken down. Later on, videos just merely having Trump's voice in it has been taken down. Project Veritas has had their videos taken down because of YouTube's terms of service, etc. You censor one side of the political spectrum, and when on occasion the other side, which happened fairly recently, for example, where a left-wing group had their channel removed for blatant terms of service violating content, they got their channel back like that in the course of, I think, two or three days. It took me almost a month to get mine back. Absolute nonsense. At the same time, we embrace the inherent complexity of and messiness of the internet, stripping away everything that's controversial could silence important voices and ideas. Controversial. Again, that word, controversial. And who decides what is and isn't controversial, right? YouTube, of course. The second principle, democratic government must provide companies with clear guidelines about illegal speech. True enough, and that has already been done. What you are being called to task for, YouTube, tends to be your overreach of illegal speech. Illegal speech has already been quite well defined in Western legislation. It is actually harmful stuff. It is violent extremism. It is terrorism content. It is stuff like executions on YouTube, which also was up for a frightening amount of time. 
that helps us remove illegal content more quickly and efficiently. These laws must be grounded in international norms as office officials balance the right to information with the risk of harm. No, they do not. They need to be balanced in the country's norms, because internationally, there are a lot of awful regimes out there. What is the international norm in China should not and must not be the international law norm in the US. The rules governing the internet are regularly updated from copyright to elections and political campaigning. There's another wonderful example. When the whole trump thing happened, the internet was rife with questions about the validity of his election for four years. Now, well, things have changed somewhat. Haven't they? Uh, there is the reason why there are more than one F word on YouTube these days, which you really shouldn't be mentioning. At least your channel simply poof, disappear. Another example of not really applying the rules all that equally. Evenly, YouTube is willing to work with government to address these and other issues, but but not everything about content moderation will be overseen by governments, which is why I believe strongly in the third principle, companies should have flexibility to develop, develop a responsible practices to handle legal but potentially harmful speech. And yet again, I return you to your first paragraph. Why should you have the ability to censor legal speech? Why? What gives you the right to do that? What, what are your qualifications, Susan? What are your team qualifications? Have you a, a large team of content moderators, professional censors perhaps, which are working on their own legislation, their own legal framework for this, their own ideological framework perhaps, and you have to censor certain points of views that might go against this framework that you have built, certain counter-narrative ideas, for example, misinformation, if you will. No, 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 the US isn't actually better off than communist Poland, you see, little girl. <sighs> At least we have a measure of control over the government, even if it is just one vote that is infinitely more influence than anyone has over Google, beyond a handful of investors, millionaires and billionaires, who tend to live slightly different lives and value slightly different things than the uh, normal people of the world. We work hard every day to be responsible, and our advertisers, users and creators hold us accountable. How? Now, advertisers, sure, they have the power to pull out. Users? Okay, well, what, what, what power do they have? What, what power do they actually have, YouTube? Oh, they could go to one of your many competitors, right? <laughs> your many competitors that aren't being throttled by your own metrics, by your own algorithms, being owned by Google and Alphabet. Competitors such as, as, as Rumble or BitChute minuscule entities, and entities that will remain in minuscule until they themselves realize that they can't simply be alternatives but must one day become competitors. And creators? As a YouTuber, Susan, let me tell you this straight. I have absolutely no ability to hold you or YouTube accountable in any way. I can't even contact you beyond Twitter. If you delete me, I have no recourse. No, I have no legal recourse. I have no real, real right of appeals. It is simply over. The quickest way to reach you again is bloody Twitter. We are working with a global alliance for responsible media. A global alliance for responsible media. Again, you are working with international elites to censor. You have gone beyond the communist government of Poland, Susan. You have become the socialist government of the internet, which are more than willing to supersede law and a country's legal system to impose the controls and restrictions that you deem to be necessary. This is why you just lost a court case in Germany, because your laws are not above that of a nation, and nor should they. What? 
I, I genuinely want an answer to that question. Why do you think you are better suited to legislate your user base than the nations in which your users live? Why are you better equipped than this? Why do you have more expertise than a nation state? Why do you have more knowledge than all of the tradition of these countries, the long-standing legal framework in these nations? And hell, bearing in mind a lot of that legal framework is deeply flawed as well. Old Germany sending police to people's houses again thing comes to mind rather swiftly. The stakes are high for updating our approach to online speech. Overregulation of legal content would have chilling effect on speech. Overregulation of legal content. Ask yourself, Susan, why have you arrived at this point? Why have you arrived at the point where you are now asking yourself, where you are now asking yourself, well, we, we shouldn't overregulate legal content. Why are you regulating anything? much less legal content. Illegal content, there's a reason. You have to. It is the law. Legal content, again. God, I feel like I'm just walking myself in circles here, but this entire article is a painful read. And of course, the justifications is stuff like COVID and the 5G networks towers that a handful of idiots started burning down. And again, I just want to ask, why are you the world's leading experts on this? Now, I'm from Norway, a country in which, um, well, I can't actually say this because questioning the vaccine is very much so frowned upon on YouTube, but I'm hoping that the bots can't read Norwegian. We just we accepted one of the vaccines, the AstraZeneca vaccine in this case, and things started happening. Then a lot more things started happening. And a lot more things started happening. And for some reason... Oh, it's misinformation, isn't it? Even though we have scientists, again, the science, we must trust the scientists, right? Except when it's the wrong kind of scientists, I do suppose, but uh, I guess I've been um, stepping over the line a little bit too much already, eh, Susan? So please, God damn it! And again, the Wall Street Journal. This is one of my biggest pet peeves with YouTube. If YouTube wanted to, it could outcompete and downright crush these publications. This, by the way, being an article that is behind a paywall on the Wall Street Journal's own site. And yet, despite simply just stepping up and realizing, no, we are the absolute unquestioned market leader, they bend over and they beg the established media, oh please, can't we have a can't we have a piece in your wonderful newspaper? Oh please, please, can't you let us into your club? We'll we'll give you advantageous treatment on our website. We'll push the mainstream media, please let us in. <sighs> Depressing little article. Anywho, I've been Arch. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.